Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I'm building my own 8-bit CPU based on the standard logic ICs. This will be a stack machine with just 256 bytes of RAM and 256 bytes of ROM. So I'm pretty small, but it means it's easily to be built. At the moment I already have a couple of core models, if I can say them, uh, which are the arithmetic and logic unit the primary stack, the register file, and now I believe it's time to start working on the external interface of my CPU. I mean the memory. Memory and clock and reset, which is not part of the equation for today. As for the memory, I have two instructions working with memory. The one loads the data from X, register X to the RAM, and another one loads the data from the RAM to the register X. So they operate with a data memory, but I also have a program memory. The program memory stores the program, it's read-only, and it's been addressed separately, so I have like two pages of memory, half Harvard architecture, where I have two different address spaces for the code and the data, but they still they share the same bus. Because of that, I need to implement some kind of a memory interface, so I will be able to multiplex both of the requests, like multiplex the reading the stream of opcodes, reading the stream of instructions, plus uh, updating or reading the data memory via the same bus, like sharing this bus. And this will be handled by my memory interface circuit. Uh, the memory interface circuit, probably that will be the circuit with the most connections in my whole CPU. Because first of all, it needs to interface the memory. It needs to interface both program ROM and data RAM. Well, obviously, I need to start with the most important signals. I need to start with the address signal, which will be 8-bit, plus I need to start with the data signal. And the data signal will be a little bit tricky in Logisim, because in the real uh, solution, in my real CPU, I'm going to use a special transceiver IC that can both as a switch of direction. So I will be either writing data to the RAM or reading data from the RAM with the transceiver. Unfortunately, Logisim doesn't support that kind of port, so they can they, it doesn't support in-out port, so it will be either in port or out port. Because of this, I will have like mem data out and mem data in. Plus, I have two more control pins coming outside mem RAM or mem ROM, so if it's one I'm accessing the data RAM, plus uh, reading or writing signal. Finally, uh, that, that's the memory interface, but I also need to specify the internal connections, so as I should be able to read from the RAM to the XR, I definitely need X in and X out ports, and X in will be gated by buffer, so it will be a great participant of the X in bus. Uh, plus, I'm going to fetch the instruction stream. So I need a port for sending instruction out. And I think this ends up my output ports. For the input ports, I need an address for the instruction. I need an address for the data. Uh, I need an X out connection because I'm going to store the X content into the RAM. So I need to get to be able to get it. I need an X out connection. Plus, I need two control pins saying whether I have uh, operation with RAM or ROM, or am I reading or writing. There, are, there will be three modes of operation. Uh, the simplest one is just reading the ROM content, and in this mode I need to send OP address to the external memory address bus, and I'm connecting my memory data into the instruction. That's really simple. Unfortunately, I will also have reading from the data RAM. And in this case, I need to be able to choose between the OP address and data address. So I need to choose between the instruction address or data address, and I can do it with a multiplexer controlled by my memory OP data or program switch. Plus, when I'm reading the data, I also need to enable the buffer, enable the output of X in with the same signal. So this covers both read operations. What about write operations? The write operation is only valid for the X register, so we never write program code, which means uh, I can directly connect X out to my memory out, 
and I need to use the date address in this time so it's exactly the same uh, and I also need to gate my memory read or write uh, in case by mistake I try to write the program RAM or sorry program ROM and this is it this is a really really simple model but I have a problem here well I have two problems here first one I need to emulate transceiver here I'm going to emulate it with two buffers but another one problem when I'm operating the RAM what happens with my fetcher what happens with my instruction it's connected to the same uh, mem data in port so my cpu will try to execute the data not the instruction which means i need to somehow handle it and i'm going to handle it in my fetch model so the fetch model technically will be pretty simple without all those instructions it will be pretty simple you just need a register to store your current address plus you need an adder yes i'm going to copy paste the adder here i can technically reuse the alu adder but i want everything to happen in just a single cycle so i need one more adder this adder will take the output of my program counter register incremented it by one and send it back to my program counter register so this is exactly a counter you get the content you add one you store it back the output of this counter goes at the op address to my memory interface and the output of instruction of my memory interface will be processed later by fetcher and sent out by as an opcode this will work if only if we wouldn't have any kind of ram access because if we have a ram access what should we do instead of storing like constantly increasing the content of a uh, program counter I can put a multiplexer that will choose between the increased output or the current output and I can control that multiplexer with the same pin memory op or data switch so in case I have a data access like RAM access I will store the current value of PC so it will not increase and on the next cycle I will read the proper instruction will it solve the problem partially because as you remember, data coming from the memory also comes on the instruction output of my memory interface, which means even if I store the same instruction, the opcode passed to the decoder model will be incorrect. How do I solve it? Well, I need another one multiplexer controlled with the same MOP data pin. And in, if, if in case I have a data operation, I need not just to store the previous value for program counter. I also need to inject a knob into the rest of the CPU. So with a knob command, no operation, which is all zeros, and I can write it as just an all zeros. And I would like to remind you that there, there are no constants in the physical design. In logical design, we have a constant, but in physical design, it will be just wires pulled down to ground. So uh, when you have a data access, you will instead of an, instead of the instruction you will send a knob command to the rest of the cpu so the cpu state will not change the address stored in the program counter will be same and on the next cycle you will pick up the proper instruction and continue now this solves my problem uh, with the multiplex in the bus so when bus is not available we are just injecting knobs into the decoder and keeping the same value of program counter but this is not the only thing that needs to be handled by fetch model because we also have branching i have three branch operations and those all of those three operations may or may not update the content of a program counter so i'm going to create my branch unit and i have three branch operations it's jump zero it Change the, program for pro change the value of a program counter when the value of x is zero, jump greater, same but if value is greater than zero, which technically means the leftmost bit is zero, and finally unconditional jump. It just changes the address. The address will be coming from my register file because uh, it supports that I indirect address in mode and that's one of the usages of this mode. Uh, so in my branch model, I only need to generate like a branching signal, like branch is taken. 
So let's make this model really pretty simple. Uh, I definitely need an X out connection because I'm going to analyze the X out register plus three pins for my three commands like jump zero, jump greater, jump unconditionally. Output will be branch taken. That's the only thing that I need to output from this model. For the jump itself, it's pretty simple. Jump is unconditional. If you see a jump, you always take a branch. Uh, for others, for jump zero, I need to check if all the pins are zero, which is a NOR. I can get uh, eight pin, like eight input ports NOR cheap. Like if I have all the bits of X set to zero, I know that jump zero branch needs to be taken. So this will be part of my branch taken tree. Finally, same for, same for jump greater than zero. Uh, as I'm splitting my bus, I can just get the latest pin, like le the leftmost pin from it, invert it, because it's greater than zero only if the leftmost pin is zero, because of the tooth complement. I've discussed tooth complement several videos ago in the ALU video. But yeah, you invert it, and in case it's zero, it becomes one, which means it's greater than zero, and branch needs to be taken. This is really, really small circuit that analyzes just X out. Probably it can be part of my decoder, but I would like it to be a separate. But that's not all. Now I have a signal that branch is taken, but I also need to handle those branching in my fetch model. I need to provide some way to set a program counter, which means I need some input for my uh, address, like a new address, which will be 8-bit. Plus, I need to set a program counter. That's not a branch taken because I have several cases when a program counter needs to be changed. I'll have it for branching and for call stack. So, I have a set program counter. What do I do with it? I need to, when I set a program counter, I need to update the content of the program counter. And right now I have just a single multiplexer, which either stores the incremented value or the current value, and I can replace it with three of multiplexers. So I will either take all the value or external value. And I will control those multiplexers with my OP data or set PC. So set PC controls whether it's external value or old one. And both of those lines, my OP data and set PC, control if whether we should take incremented value or like a special value. I also need to update the instruction because uh, this is one cycle delayed and when I update my PC I'm already reading the content of the current instruction so instead of reading that content like it will try to execute the instruction after the branch command and then take the branch so to avoid the situation I also need to send a knob command during the next cycle and this is it this is branching it sounds complicated, but in non-pipeline CPU, it's pretty small. Oh, the next thing that I would like to implement, like the other case of changing my program counter, is the call stack. And the thing with the call stack is that I would like to have some kind of a function call or sub-procedure call. I have two commands in my CPU, call and read. When you make a call, the address of the next command after a call should be stored somewhere. And when you call a ret, you should take that stored address and jump back. So emulating my functions. You don't need to memorize like where have I made the call and where should I return. You don't need to store it manually. I would like to have a hardware support for it. As this is going to be a hardware support, I have to limit the depth of the stack because it will not be stored in a RAM. It will be stored in a set of registers and I'm going to have just four registers for it plus output buffers for them to emulate output enable and I will have a state register. The state register will point to the current empty register of my stack. With this I will be able to decode the value of my state, state register for writing. So if it stays zero and you have call active, you can store the current next address value in the register zero. What happens when you do this? I will also need a add sub model. Yes, one more adder and one more subtractor. Sorry, when you make a call, you will increase 
the value of the state register. So from the register of zero, it will start to point to register one and so on and so forth. Opposite happens with the reading. Like, yes, I will also have a decoder of the state register and that will enable outputs of those state register and that will be connected to the output bus and result, the same as uh, we had in the register file. But as we point to the like current free register, current free level of nesting, the reader will take the subtracted value. When you call a read, it will look one register higher. And this is it. And automatically when you have either call or read situation, you will update the state register either incrementing or decrementing the value. Initially, I thought it could be like two bits register, but then realized that it will be easier to buy just the same kind of hardware, to buy an 8-bit register and just don't use the remaining bits. The one thing that I need to do here is we may have an error condition. Like what will happen if you try to write register number five or if you, what would try if you'd like to read register above zero. You should make an error. And the error conditions are pretty simple for uh, the call situation. Uh, when you write the register number five, like if your state is five, which is 101, you have an error. Same for the return. If you try to write the, the next value above the zero, which is zero X FFFF, all bits set. If you have all bits set, that's an error. And all bits set is actually exactly opposite of uh, all bits are zero. That's how you generate an error signal in this circuit. Okay, having this call stack circuit, uh, you can store the next address in like series of four registers. You have a finite state machine that tracks which register is active right now. Uh, you have error generating circuit and you can return the address of the return, like address of the call site, your return address. What should you do next? You need to add the support for all of this into your fetch model. Well, actually you have two things to add here. Uh, you have a next address support, which is pretty simple. You just get the output of your adder and export it outside of your fetch model. But for the error condition, it's a little bit tricky. What I would like to do with the error condition, in like if, if you ever register an error, which may stay just for a single cycle, you need to lock it somehow. And for this, I will need uh, one more register. And for that one more register, I'm going to make a really clever trick. I will keep the input of that register exactly at one, but my error input pin uh, will be connected to the right enable of this register. So whenever error happens, it will be registered automatically. And the content of this register will, be, will become one because the default state is zero and it will be set to zero at the reset. Even if it goes down on the next cycle, if we don't have error anymore, it will be latched here. And as input is constantly connected to one, it will never disappear. And what I would like to do when I have an error, I would like to keep the same value of my PC, because I'm going to put some physical uh, LEDs, so I will be able to see the content of my PC like right, right on my CPU, uh, so I will be able to debug it. So I would like to stop it there, plus I would like to start sending knobs constantly to my CPU, which is technically a permanent condition of RAM access, which means I can just connect the output of this error ledge. It should be error log because it's not a real ledge, that's a register. So I, can, I should connect the output of the error log to the OR gate with the MEM OP data. So if you have either error or memop data, you put the CPU into the same stall state. And that's it. That's the, my whole fetcher. I think I don't need to extend it anymore. The next steps, I plan to connect everything to my CPU. I already spotted a couple of errors here, so I will fix them offline. Uh, I will probably make a couple of tests for my sequential circuits. For the next video, decoder which will be the logic that takes an opcode and generates all of those control signals. With the decoder, my CPU will be ready. It will be able to run my CPU right in a Logisim and check if it works. And this will end my logical design part. So next will be, after this will be physical design, but let's not look 
that far to the future. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.